consider this a warning. None of the drawings in this video have been drawn to scale on purpose and not because I was being lazy and just using the same triangle template over and over again, but because I need you to not rely on the way the figures look, but rely on the information you're given, like the markings. So let's proceed. So in this video, we'll be talking about the triangle congruencies, um, which are gonna seem like a little minor thing in geometry, but you're actually gonna use them quite a bit. Um, so let's first recall what it means to be congruent. Polygons are congruent when corresponding sides and corresponding angles are congruent. And re remember, we talked about this in the beginning of the year when we were naming figures and we said, hey, order matters when you name things because things have to match up, especially when you write statements like this. So this statement is saying that angle C corresponds to angle K, angle H corresponds to angle E, and angle I corresponds to angle N, and they are all congruent and all three sides are congruent, so I can say triangle CHI is congruent to triangle KEN. Um, I have a question. And this question I have really stems from a little bit of laziness, because uh, if I'm gonna show that two triangles are congruent, do I really need to show that all six parts that correspond to each other on both triangles are congruent? Like, do I have to show all three sides are congruent and three angles are congruent in order to prove that the triangles are congruent? I certainly hope not, because that's a lot of work. And so, if not, uh, what is the minimum number of parts that I need to show that two triangles are congruent? And does the order in which those parts appear in the triangle matter? So let's start off real simple. So if I have two triangles where one side is congruent on both triangles, are those two triangles congruent? And the answer is obviously no, because if I have two triangles, both with like a three centimeter side length, I can think, well, how many triangles can I construct that have a side length of three centimeters? Uh, the answer is a lot. So if the answer was only one, then that would be a shortcut for congruency. So only having one side congruent on both triangles, not a shortcut. What if I give you one angle, right? So if I have two triangles that both have a 70 degree angle, are those triangles congruent? So I think, okay, someone gives me a 70 degree angle. How many different triangles can I construct with that? The answer is a lot. So one angle is not a shortcut that I can use. So now I have to get a little less lazy and I think, okay, Let's say I have two triangles. Each of them has two sides that are congruent to each other. So they each have a three centimeter and a four centimeter side length. And I have to think, okay, how many triangles can I construct that have a side length of three and a side length of four? And the answer is a lot because, well, I can just change the angle of those two sides and create a tons of different triangles. So two sides, not enough to prove congruency. Okay, so what if I have two congruent angles? So I have two triangles. They both have a 70 degree angle and a 30 degree angle. And how many triangles can I construct? And oh, it looks like one, but oh, wait a minute. I can just move this side. Oh, and look, I'm creating tons of different triangles, each of whom have a 30 and 70 degree angle, but they're not congruent. So two angles, not enough either. So what if I have two triangles? They have a congruent angle and a congruent side. Is that enough? So I think back to my constructions. Someone gives me an angle, some gives me a sides. How many triangles can I draw? Well, okay, so I've got a 70 degree angle and a four centimeter side, and I think, oh, well, maybe that's enough. But is it, really? Because remember, this ray goes on forever, and I can have a whole bunch of different sides, right, that are gonna match up, right? It's just gonna change, that third side's gonna change length, that angle over here is going to change, but I still have many different triangles that have a 70 degree angle and a four centimeter side, right? So having a side congruent and an angle congruent, not enough to show congruent triangles. So, okay, so can't use one part, can't use two parts. Let's try three parts. So now let's look at 
three parts, which means I have two triangles that have three corresponding parts are congruent. Is it enough to show that those two triangles are congruent? Now, there are several combinations, and we'll look at this one first, side, side, side. And this is a common exercise in constructions where your teacher gives you three uh, lengths that are to be used as the sides of a triangle, and you have to construct the triangle. And you can show you know, triangle inequality with that. Um, but what you can also think about is, well, if I have all three sides, how many triangles can I construct when I'm given the three sides? And so I have six centimeters as a side, four centimeters as a side, and three centimeters as a side. And remember, the way to construct a triangle given three sides is to draw one side of the triangle. And then you swing two arcs, uh, one that is the length of the second side and one that's the length of the third side uh, from the endpoints until the arcs meet, boink, and you get your triangle. Those uh, two arcs are going to only intersect in one spot. So absolutely, if I have the three sides congruent, then I have congruent triangles. So going back to this, I know this is a yes. If I have the three sides congruent, those triangles are congruent. So now let's look at if all three angles are congruent. And this one's actually really easy. All you have to do is think about equilateral triangles. So here I have two equilateral triangles drawn together. They share this angle up here. So I have this triangle and this triangle. They're all equilateral, but that orange triangle is not congruent to this bigger triangle at all. Be just because the angles are the same doesn't mean the sides are going to be the same. Um, and they are obviously not. So angle, angle, angle is a no. So now let's look at the case where two sides are congruent and an angle is congruent. Okay, Or uh, angle, side, side. Now I wrote these two different ways because the order and placement is going to matter, right? Having a side-side angle means if I travel around the triangle, I'm going to in encounter a side, a side, and an angle. Or I'm going to encounter an angle, a side, and a side, right? And the order has to be the same on both. So side, side, angle, angle, side, side, okay? And that's different than having the two sides with the angle in between. Okay, so I'm specifically looking at when I have a triangle where a side and the next side and then an angle are congruent. And so I want to know if side, side, angle, or angle, side, side, um, will show me two congruent triangles. So are these two triangles as marked? Are they congruent? So what I have here are my three parts. I have my angle and I have two sides. And I want to see that if I have an angle and then a side. Remember, I have to go around angle, side, and I have to put the third side over here, or second side over here, like so. Is this going to create a unique triangle for me? Right? So I can imagine I can make a triangle that goes out this way. I didn't make my ray long enough, but you can see if I extend the ray, I can make a triangle. So then that question is, is this the only triangle that I could create? If this is the only triangle I could create from an angle, a side, and a side, then it's a congruency. But if I take this side and I rotate it like this, I can get a second triangle using the same angle, side, and a side. So that means if I have an angle and a side and a side, then that does not guarantee congruence because I have two different triangles that I can construct from those pieces in that particular order. So this side-side angle, side-side angle, not congruent. So this is a no. Okay, so let's try side-angle side. And remember, uh, order matters, so I'm going to go around in circle. I should have corresponding sides, corresponding angles, and corresponding sides. And this angle in between the two sides is called the included angle. So I have side one, side two, included angle. Side one, side two, included angle. Meaning that angle is made up by those two sides. So let's see if that gives us congruent triangles. So same deal. I have an angle, and I have a side going this way 
right? Makes up one of the sides of the angle. And I have a side of the triangle going this way. And I think, how many triangles can I construct in this configuration of having a side of four, an angle of 70, and a side of three? Well, I have to just connect those two points, right? Those two endpoints, and I get one triangle. So that means that if I have been given two triangles where they have two congruent sides and their included angle is also congruent, that means I have two congruent triangles because I can only construct one triangle with that side, that side, and that angle in this configuration. So this answer is yes. So now let's go to angle side angle. If I have this scenario where two triangles, corresponding angles are congruent, and then the side included in between the two angles are congruent, is that going to guarantee congruent triangles? So once again, I think about constructing that. I have my two, two angles here. I've got a 30 degree angle and a 70 degree angle, right? And I have to have the side in between them, okay? So let's say this length has to be four centimeters. And I think, okay, so if I have an angle, a side, and an angle, right, where the side is included in those angles, does it form a unique triangle? And uh, yeah, it does. Uh, these angles match up with this side length of four. There's only one intersection point there. You can imagine the construction, right? And you've actually did this construction. Uh, it was on that last construction activity. Uh, question nine, where I gave you two angles and a side, and I asked you to construct two different triangles, and this is the construction that most people did, and then you swapped the angles, right? You did the 70 first, then the side, then the 30, and oh, you got the same triangle, right? Well, that's because <laughs> if I have an angle and an angle congruent, and the side in between them congruent, and two triangles, they're the same triangle. They're congruent. So this is also, yes. So I have one more combination to check. Two angles again and a side, but this time it's going to be side angle angle or angle angle side, which means going around the triangle, I encounter side angle angle, right, or angle angle side. So the corresponding parts match up. And so I can actually show this several ways. I can use one of these previous ones and some other conjectures, or I can use my pieces. All right, so again, I have two angles right? And this side, like somewhere over here, right? So I have side, right? This is fixed right here. And I have my two angles, right? And then, oh, same thing happens, right? That end point is going to hit that other side of the angle at a unique spot. So angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle, absolutely is a triangle congruency. And so this is also a yes. So if I have two triangles marked like this with all three sides congruent, that means those two triangles are congruent. If I have two triangles where their angles are marked congruent, not congruent, right? Same thing if I have side, side, angle going around in a circle, doesn't matter what direction, answer is no, those two triangles are not congruent. If I have side, angle, side, totally congruent, angle side angle, totally congruent, and angle angle side, or side angle angle, absolutely congruent. All right, so when I was in geometry, side side side, angle angle angle, those were easy to remember. And then side angle side and angle side angle, remembering that, you know, uh, a side was in between two angles, or an angle was between two sides. I remember those congruencies. But it's that angle, angle, side one that always got me tripped up, okay? So here I have two triangles, uh, BLP and TNG, and I'm telling you that B is congruent to T, and L is congruent to N, and I'm gonna ask, are these two triangles congruent? And it looks like I have two angles and a side, right, that are congruent, so it looks like it might be angle, angle, side, but there's a problem, right? Because if I look at these sides, are they corresponding, right? Do they match up? 
in order for the congruency of angle angle side to hold, I need the parts to correspond. So across from angle B, I have side P, right? Right. And then over here, across from angle T, I have this side here that's GN. And so do these two congruent sides of the triangle, are they corresponding? And no, they are not, right? In order for these two triangles to be congruent, either this side, PL, has to be congruent to GN, or BP has to be congruent to TG, because the sides have to correspond. So BLP and TNG are not congruent because the side's in the wrong spot. Yes, I have side angle angle, but here I have angle angle side. They gotta be the same. Either side angle angle, side angle angle, or angle angle side, not both at the same time. And so now let's write up our formal conjectures of which there are four. C24 is called the SSS or side 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 congruence conjecture. It says if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. We kind of already knew that though. C25 is SAS conjecture, which stands for side angle side conjecture. It says if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. C26 is ASA congruence conjecture. That stands for angle side angle. It says if two angles and the included side of a triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Then C27 is the side angle angle congruence conjecture. It says if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding angles and corresponding side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Key here is corresponding. And for follow-up, yes, all the converses are true. If I have congruence triangles, then yes, I know the parts are congruent, but we lump them all into one conjecture, which we'll look at later. And then remember, angle, 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 side, side, angle, angle, side, side, not triangle congruencies.